Hey guys, what's up? This is Headcase on the Sticks, playing some Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014, and I'm still on them dead walking sticks, the zombies that just don't ever die, and when they do, they come back eventually. Uh, this deck is so good, and I'm going to say at the end of the week whether it takes the cake for my favorite black deck of all duels forever. This hand is pretty good. Mutilate's a little janky, but you got always... You gotta love it when it's in your hand. I mean, it's so good if, if things get out of control, like Champion of the Parish, if that gets out of control, like double Champion of the Parish, that'd be pretty sweet. Doesn't look like that's gonna happen because he led off with an exploration. So we're playing Chant of Moldaya. Not the best of decks, uh, not the best of hands for uh, against that deck, actually. I got sort of a mid-range. My hand is so powerful, though. But my removal suite is just not very good against large things. However fragile they may be, uh, Tendrils probably isn't going to get it done, and neither is Mutilate for the same reason, because I'm not going to control 48 Swamps to deal with this 48-48. Pretty crucial turn two form here. I have Eugen. Eugen? I think I always said Eugen. Eugen? Maybe I said Eugen. I have Eugen. I think I did say Ugin. And I closes. A race awakens. It's pretty sick. I like it. Pretty good in the deck. I need to uh, make sure. Two less to cast and then go get you a creature card. So if it was a colorless card, of course, that card would probably be broken. Not really broken. It's still expensive to, to cast. So I drew the land for my lords. Question is, do I want to get down Drolf's Messenger first? The answer to that question in, question is yes, because if, then if I draw another land, I'm going to have Undead Warchief out the turn after uh, when he's untapped and swinging in, and that's just that just seems very good. But I need to pay attention not to overextend. I was This is why I was looking at uh, this, making sure it was a colorless creature card, because if it was just a colorless, he could go, he could go get uh, all his dust. So Grazing Gladeheart, I don't know how much. I don't know how much that's that's going to affect it. I mean, it kind of seems like I want to kill that thing, but I don't know if I want to do it now. I kind of want to cast my Lord so I can just keep the pressure up. I don't think I'm going to kill it because now I have the man I have the the proper removal for his big stuff so I'm, I'm gonna keep with the plan I'm gonna swing in and he's definitely gonna take this I wish he would block but he won't that's unfortunate uh, yeah I was about to say so drops messenger into hopefully undead war chief if not death baron like geez look at the synergies can't afford your 4-drop? Well, I have I got a bargain for you. I've got a 3-drop Lord also. So yeah, if I draw a land, I'm still going to cast the War Chief, but like, I don't want this uh, Gladeheart to just start popping off. So that's pretty good that he drew... Let's see, does that, does that stack? I think so, I think so but he, he's not going to have a land in his hand. So after I drop the War Chief, then I'll Doom Blade, right? But he's gotten so much value out of out of that Glade Heart by then, because uh, this, yeah, I think because Colony Heart Expedition is about to be able to get is about to be sacked. Yeah, whatever, everything I just said, I can I can no longer do. So I'm gonna tendrils it actually. Come over here. This is three quest counters, right? Man, I can't even talk anymore because I'm letting a Glade Heart make me mi make misplays over here. So I can't cast my Undead War Chief. I really think I need to take care of that Glade Heart, right? No, because really, like, the, this guy just nullifies each land that guy drops. I get Tendrils now, though. Whatever. Tendrils now. No. Maybe this is a misplay. I'm not really sure how to play around Gladeheart just yet, but taking nine, I mean, I don't care if he's gaining a bunch of life. Is he gaining nine? So, I don't know. Maybe it's a bad play, but my board state is sweet, so I'm going to keep that up. 
Uh, but he's about to gain, what, six of it back minimum? So, well, maybe not. I guess that's not minimum. Minimum would be zero because he could have no lands in his hand, but there you go. So he just got, like, a ton of use out of uh, the Glade Heart. So like I said, maybe that was a mistake, but my board position is way better now. So after I, uh, after I Tendrils of Corruption him... I'm going to be in even better shape, I think. So 9, 10, 11, 12, I cannot win next turn. But he would have to chump block, wouldn't he? He would have to chump block. When did I pick up this quest for the Graveyard? Like, when did, <laughs> when did that happen? I wasn't even paying attention. So I guess first I'm going to cast that. And yeah, I'm not going to do Tendrils if you haven't figured it out yet, because he has to chump block this, or he loses. Or if he plays that Fog Effect, which I think I'd be okay with. The Annihilator Death Head 1983. Yeah, so that's good. But I mean, he got just a ton of value out of that Glade Heart. So I'm pretty much overextending, but not really, because if he all of Dusts, this won't go off because this goes along with it, right? It's colored permanent, so that goes along with it. But it only destroys, so I'll get my messenger back. Yeah. See, I mean, what did that deck do? I mean, it ramped really well. I mean, kind of. He only has eight land. Not, well, the Eye of Ugin is over there. That's a the thing. But it just didn't... I don't know. The deck's just, just like, hey, look at all my lands. Okay, I lose. You know, that's what it feels like. So, seven minutes, so sure, guys, I'll give you another game. Sorry if it sucks and the guy doesn't do anything the whole game. But I'm going to get in there. I'm going to go turn this air down. It's hot as balls in here. Oh, yeah, the old lazy no editing turned down the air. So here we go. Make it quick, baby. Get in there. Who wants it? Hmm. I haven't really playtested too much with the cards that I've been wanting to playtest with. Like, Vampiric Tutor, I guess I have maybe a little bit. Uh, I'm talking about this week playing with this deck, so... I haven't seen my 3-2 of First Strike, my Avatar Ghoul. I haven't seen him too much. I want to see how he matches up in the, in the aggro... Uh, see how much he helps me stabilize in the aggro matchups. Let's see, what else? Nightmare? I think I had Nightmare one game. I didn't even cast it. So. Hmm. Don't know if I should back out or not. Sure. Go get me another lobby. Oh, I can't even back out. So start fresh. Never know if this helps, but it seems to. And after this, I'll give it I'll give it a couple seconds and I'll go seek out my own lobby, which I'd never do on this game. Because it seems like it never works. So I think she might be hotter than Liliana. Do not I mean my, my avatar is what I mean by that. Maybe that's just like magic blasphemy, but she is pretty hot for a Demonic su Succubus. So yeah, I'm going to get out of there. Custom match, free for all. Oh my gosh. Let's get, let's, what, what is this? Mr. Easy Squeezy? He's worth the risk of being at the top. Yeah, that was not worth the risk. I lied. Deadbolt fan. I'm going to ready up. Come on, guy. Come on, stock avatar guy. I gotta change my avatar, man. I like customizations. Not too much into them, but you know, I don't like running the, the stock all the time. Is that a grazing glade heart in the background there? Actually, I bet it is. No, because they came out. I think Battlefall Harvest. I, well, maybe that artworks was reprinted. Yeah, I just had. I, I did what I usually do. This is a nuts starter hand. I mean, it's not crazy nuts, but it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm on the draw, so that's not all that nut-tastic as I had initially suggested. 
But uh, yeah, I just did the old head case special where I, I start like eight thoughts and I finish none of them. So you're just left with like, okay, I'm following you. Okay, changing it. He'll get back to that. Oh, 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 yeah, curveball again. Okay. And then he just stopped talking and started talking about something completely different. So I definitely know I do that. So I'm drawing nothing but land. So this could run out of steam pretty damn quick. He went and team offed for a, uh, a swamp. I definitely need to hit continue if he ever wants to get another turn. So enter the Draco Mancer is I've I have not played against that deck very much, so I'm just gonna run right into Jun Charm. Jun Charm won't even be that big of a deal though, because I have grave crawlers that have recursion. Most likely if I ever draw it. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw one of my four I'm gonna draw the War Chief. I'm gonna go like let's see, what's the perfect turn two? I guess Blood Gas is a pretty good turn two. So Blood Gas next turn, and I rip, uh, like, Death Baron, which is one of the three mana lords, and then... Oh, Giraffe's Messenger. Yes. And then, cast Giraffe's Messenger when it gets to it. Oh! <laughs> oh, there's step one. All right, I was getting ahead of myself. Sorry to scream. That was, that was exciting. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to turn two Blood Gas, and then turn three... Giraffe's Messenger that I was gonna draw, that I said I was gonna draw and did, and then uh, when he untaps, I'm gonna draw the War Chief and be super happy. Uh, yeah, the Blood Gas was a dumb play here because if I do draw one of my Lords, um, Grave I mean, Blood Gas isn't gonna get buffed. It's one thing. Uh, what's one thing about Blood Gas? I'm considering not playing him. I don't know if I'm playtesting him though. I think he has a spot in the deck. Oh man, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. So it actually doesn't matter at all about uh, what I was talking about. Well, I guess it does too. The play here is still Drops Messenger, and he's taken four. I could do Butcher Ghoul and Gravecrawler and be able to restabilize off a uh, Jun Charm, but I don't want to play around Jun Charm. I think there's only two in the deck, and and really um, that wouldn't even be that good because I would have. Yeah, this is I forgot. I, I, I'm just I'm just talking and not even thinking right now. Do not listen to the last minute of what I just said. I don't know why. I think it's because I've gotten wrecked by Jun Charm, but I'm always scared of it, but I shouldn't be. I mean, he's just ramping into a giant um, Borderland Ranger. <laughs> no, he's ramping into a giant fire-breathing dragon that's just going to kick my ass because I've, I can't deal with it. But Got a pretty good board state, I would say. Bloodgast, I need to remember to keep back his landfall ability because he's about to go. Man, can I just, like, dump my hand? Yep. So, like I said, I need to keep the landfall ability back. Swing in with the team, the Brewskis. He correctly blocks the Dross Messenger. The Messenger comes back now out of... Wait. What the hell was that? I thought that wasn't going to resolve there for a second. I was about to freak out. So do this, and then I get to lay both uh, ghouls. Got to love it. This, man, this deck is so good. Like, this deck might be better than Avacyn's Glory. It doesn't have the super explosive draw that... It's like they're tailor-made to fight against each other, though, you know? It doesn't have the super explosive draw of the... Uh, What's-his-dick. Whatever that guy is. Champion of the Parish. And to, like, gather the townsfolk. It doesn't have that sort of start, but it does have the Gravecrawler start... And Gravecrawler can be considered like an arguably equally as good rare because I can get him back. And he's just like always going to be poking you in your dick for two. Like always. It's always going to happen. So anyway, that's going to do it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast. Hope you did too. And I'll see you later, guys. Later, homies.